Hello everyone, so today we're going to be playing some Total War Pharaoh, the brand new game that's going to be coming out uh, very soon in the Total War series. And this is a fully fledged historical Total War title, which I'm excited about. And of course, it's about the ancient Near East, the late Bronze Age to be exact. And as Gudea of Lagash, of course, uh, I'm excited. And I'm excited to have this opportunity as well. So, we're going to be playing in this campaign as uh, Shupiluliuma, the last of his kind. Shupiluliuma rules from the large Hittite capital of Khatusha, beset on all sides by those who would gladly destroy him. The once mighty kingdom of Khati crumbles, and only the great king holds the fragile pieces together. Couple things to note: so the H, the H's in Hittite are most probably pronounced as H, and the S's are probably Sh. So, uh, yeah, so for the Hittite factions and the Egyptians as well, uh, and the Canaanites too, the factions are not the actual kingdom you're playing as, they're named after the leader. So, of course, uh, that's something I've talked about at length in previous videos, it's something similar to what Troy did. Uh, and so we're playing as the Hittite Empire under King Shupiluliuma. This is historical Shupiluliuma II, who was the last known great king of the Hittite Empire prior to the destruction of Khatusha in a great fire and siege and attack. So let's um, let's get started. This is supposed to be a hard campaign, so let's let's uh, get the party started. All right, so here we are in the campaign. Uh, of course, at the very beginning, it gives you this faction summary, which I enjoy. It gives you like an overview of unique faction buildings, like for the Hittites, they have militia gathering posts, refugee centers, and garrison quarters. It gives you faction units, so there, there are local units that all factions can recruit in certain regions, and there are also faction units that are unique to the faction. So we've got like Khatushan Axemen and Hittite three-man chariots. If you've played like Civ, Civ three, you'll, I think you'll know about the Hittite chariots. Uh, and then you have unique commands and unique stuff regarding the court. Uh, and of course, the Hittites. Uh, one of the main gods was the sun goddess of Arena, and we'll we'll talk about that a little more later. But anyway, I do like that it gives that faction summary at the start. And you can see uh, the campaign map here. So we've got three settlements at the start here as the Hittite kingdom. So we're down to three settlements from a much larger empire. Of course, historically, under the I, the Hittites controlled like almost all of this region here in Asia Minor and uh, Cilicia, as well as all the way down into Syria and even parts of the Levant as well. But of course, at the end, uh, the kingdom was uh, quite reduced until the capital was destroyed too. So we've got a faction here, Kurunta. This should really be called um, Tarhuntasha, I would say. And uh, uh, Kurunta was sort of a, he was a Hittite governor and then kind of a rebel leader uh, during the reign of Tutkhalia IV, the uh, Hittite king. And he ended up ruling this region as a leader himself. His name was Luvian. So Luvian was the other major language of the late Hittite Empire. You can look up Luvian hieroglyphics and hieroglyphic inscriptions. But anyway, Shupiluliuma, a nice classical Hittite name. So at the beginning here, we are invaded from the north by the Kashka, the Kashka people. So the, a lot of people suggest that the Kashka caused the downfall of the Hittite Empire of Khati as they were called. And uh, they have, they're called uh, uh, Shapinua here in the north. These are the Kashka. So we have to defeat these guys because we are at war with them right from the start. And they are threatening our capital at Khatusha. 
So let's take down Nua Nua here. All right, so they start out with uh, Kashkian Axemen and Tribesmen, two-handed club infantry, axe and shield infantry, and the general's bodyguards are, have swords and shields. So we've got a lot of swords and sword and shield infantry, Khatushan swordsmen, and we've got tribemen, two-handed spear infantry, and we've got chariots. So the chariots are going to give us a nice, nice advantage. So let's get the battle started. Uh, Shupiluliuma II, of course, uh, is known for a couple of battles he fought. He apparently fought a battle near Cyprus, a naval battle. I believe one of the earliest naval battles we have details about. And uh, he also fought some battles in Southern Asia Minor. Those are battles we know about. And then, of course, he did fight other battles. We just don't know about them because the kingdom was destroyed uh, during his reign. So he met an unfortunate demise. In all probability, of course. We don't know for sure. Okay, so let's deploy here. I like this new weather condition screen. Okay. So the Hittites here, uh, if, if you've seen some previews of the Egyptians, uh, the Egyptians have um, a lot of missile troops, and that's very useful for them against like lesser armored Canaanite forces. But the Hittites have more of a uh, they're strong infantry, pretty like general purpose infantry, like the sword and shield, Khatushan uh, uh, swordsmen and chariots. So it's a little bit of a different military force. I don't find that the battles in the game are samey. For all the factions, I do find that there's a pretty good diversity here. It's something I'll talk about more in the future. So let's uh, put our swordsmen in the front here. I think they're going to be the most effective. And then we'll have our uh, spearmen as kind of a reserve in the back. And our king will put on the left flank. So let's start the battle here. Let me show off some of our units, actually. So these are our um, Khatushan swordsmen, looking pretty nice in their garb there. Um, who else have we got? We've also got our tribesmen, sort of low-ranking infantry. You can see right there. Pretty good for defense and flanking because they're quick. And then Supiluliuma himself on the right here, kind of heavier spear and shield infantry, pretty good for defense. And Supiluliuma himself right in the front over there. Oh, and we've got some troops, some reinforcements coming from the outpost that uh, we are close to. I have to say, I do, um, you know, a lot of people have made comparisons to Empire Total War with the outposts in this game, and uh, I, the outposts were actually something I really enjoyed in Total War Empire. They weren't outposts in Empire, they were more, um, they were like towns, they were like outlying towns. And I really liked them, they were one of my favorite features in Empire. And I really wish they they would bring them back in some respect. And this outpost system in Pharaoh is kind of similar to that. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Battle map looking pretty nice. Pretty nice. I'm not running this on the most powerful hardware of all time. So this is kind of a mid-ranger, a mid-range uh, laptop, so you'll kind of get a good feel for how the game will look on a sort of mid-range machine if you have something like that. Uh, a desktop, of course, will be much more powerful in general, so. Generally, I have never used the most powerful hardware, so it's not really a big deal for me. But uh, Troy was one of the most well-performing uh, well Total Wars I've ever played. So that's definitely a strength that I think they're coming off of. So I hope, I hope that things turn out well for everybody.
because I know the experience is going to be different for everybody, of course. I don't want to um, make any assumptions. Alright, so their Kashkian Axemen have charged in against our swordsmen here. And they're kind of taking on two units of swordsmen at once. Uh, axemen are pretty good against uh, sword and shield infantry, as far as I can tell, because the axes are kind of a little armor-piercing. That's been something that's true in Total War since Rome, I'd say, if not Medieval One. So that's not a surprising uh, mechanic here to see. Our Khatushan swordsmen are actually not doing that great. We actually have a, a disadvantage in terms of the terrain right there. This kind of reminds me of the initial battles in um, Shogun 2. Okay, so we're defeating the tribesmen on the left flank, so that's good. Okay, hit them from the flank, Shupiluliuma. Let's get our Ememe. Our uh, spear and shield bodyguard to hit those guys from the flank. And our Hittite chariots. I want them to hit the center. Yeah, chariots will charge at the axemen in the center. So let's get a good look at our chariot charge here. Ah, okay. Very good indeed. Yeah, our veteran swordsmen were actually not doing that great. So let's actually get our tribesmen in there to kind of fill in the gaps and uh, supplement our troops and maybe cause a chain route here. That would be nice. The tribesmen are doing pretty poorly on the left flank, which is good. We lost a chariot. A couple of chariots, actually. But I think the enemy should rout soon. So Supiluliuma hit the enemy general, Numa Nuwa, there. And veteran swordsman, too. Let's pull our chariots back and maybe charge again if we have to. Maybe charge on this flank. Because the enemy has not uh, routed yet here. Battles, as you can see, are paced more slowly than the average Total War, which I think a lot of people will appreciate. Yeah, our center took a lot of heat, unfortunately, but it was necessary for the victory. Yeah, they are routing. So once the enemy general starts to rout, we should be in a good position to finish this quickly. Yeah, so the tribesmen are routing, the axemen are also routing. Very good indeed, our chariots took some heat unfortunately i've been concentrating so much on okay we got him from the flank they're done their goose has been cooked so let's actually get our chariot here to hit their general is their general gone 
No. Well, once their general is down, I'll be happy. Yeah, the enemy general. Just a couple of... Couple more of them. And there will be a little notification here that he's gone. I do actually like that the general has his uh, face icon up there, if he's still alive. So he's done. He's done. There we go. So as you can see, the, the Kashkins have pretty strong offensive infantry. And the Hittites are more balanced, so our troops were able to hold the line pretty well. But the enemy was able to inflict a good amount of casualties until I was able to actually successfully flank them and use my maneuvers against them. So they're a tough enemy. They're a tough enemy. I'd say our food looks like it's a little low, so I'm going to go for... You know what? I'm going to replenish my units instead. Because I lost probably a few more troops than I wanted to. So I'll do that. So now... The enemy controls Arena, which is of course where the sun goddess of Arena is based, and she's like the main goddess we worship here. Uh, as the Hittite Empire. So... I think I'm going to fight one more battle here. Take out Harashi. And, uh, yeah, let's fight this one, take him out, and we'll be able to plan our offensive to take Arena back from the Kashkian invaders. I have to say, as, since I am Gudea, I'm excited about an ancient Near Eastern, um, setting here for Total War. It's, you know, Troy could have been that game, but I know they kind of wanted to bridge the gap between fantasy and historical. This is a full historical, and I'm excited for that. Okay, there we go. Dry, there we go. Okay, so let's... Let's put our uh, swordsman in the front like we did last time. Uh, last time I had my spears in reserve and I didn't use them that much. But this time I want to put them on the flanks. Uh, because I don't, I don't have as many chariots as I did last time. I want to be more careful with my chariots. And we'll put the king on the left like we did last time. So let's start the battle. Let's move our swordsmen in. First, let's get our spears... Way on the flank there. These are lightly armored spearmen, the Hittite tribesmen. So they move a little more quickly. It's kind of like Troy in that respect. So, yeah, let's get our guys in there. I'll move the chariots even more farther inward. So we've got a Kashkian tribesmen. Again, these are good offensive infantry, but when you flank them, uh, they're good against like shield infantry, they're good with armor piercing. But when you flank them, they really get hit hard quickly. As you saw, the route was pretty quick. Let's actually get our spears in as kind of a scouting force up there. And the chariots way round the back. Let's speed this up a bit. Ah! They've come out to play. Okay, perfect. Let's get our troops in there. Let's reinforce our spearmen on the right. Let's have Supiluluma hit the tribesmen. 
from the side as well. We'll move the chariots around the back. And we'll have our tribesmen that were on the left flank kind of fill in this gap here that's been created. Okay, so let's get our troops in here. Ah, they have axemen. So we'll have our swordsmen hit them. We'll back them up with our spears. Supiluliuma is going to hit these tribesmen from the flank. And our chariots are going to charge these tribesmen in the center. So let's take a look at Supiluliuma himself in battle. Looking good with his uh, sort of Mesopotamian god type helmet with the horns. I do like his design. It's very colorful. Oh, he just... Oh. Well, Supiluliuma just got hit in the face. Has he retired from the battle or has he retired permanently? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was pretty bad. That would, you know, it wouldn't be a good day of video if I didn't get my general smacked in the face. That's for sure. Anyway, like I said, the tribesmen are pretty good against infantry with shields due to their heavy weapons. So our chariot did charge in there. And that was pretty good. Let's get our chariots out of there and charge again. Yeah, hit the Harashi. Our chariots are getting caught in the weeds there. That's not good. Yeah, so chariots, let's hit the Harashi from the back again. So let's see if we can cause some damage there. Our chariots are in a little trouble there. Ah, our swordsmen got hit pretty hard. I'm gonna move our tribesmen here. I forgot about this reserve unit of tribesmen. I'm gonna move the chariots back to help Supiluliuma's bodyguard unit. I'm gonna hit these axemen from the side with the tribesmen. Our chariots are again caught in the weeds here. No, they're doing well. Let's cause those tribesmen to rout. And if they rout, then that'll free up Shupiluliuma's unit to actually do some damage on the flank. Okay, okay, they're routing. I'll keep the chariots fighting them. And let's have Shupiluliuma's unit regroup. And hit the Harashi from the center. I'm going to have our one swordsman try to retreat. That was uh, pretty bad of me to put a damaged unit there in the center. But, you know, it's okay. Our one swordsman escaped there. So you chase those tribesmen. Did we get these guys in the center? Yeah, get those Kaskians. Okay. Hit the Harashi. Or, I mean, Harashi's the general. Hit his uh, bodyguard. Okay, did we cause a rout here? The tribesmen are routing. Which is good. Veteran Khatushans concentrate on the bodyguard. 
and tribesmen concentrate on the axemen. Yeah, the enemy general's bodyguard is pretty tough at the moment. Okay, our troops are kind of freed up here. So you guys come here and hit the axemen from the flank. And I believe that'll cause a, a rout of the final units. We're fighting in the bushes here, so it's not very glamorous. All right. They are routing. So now hit the general's bodyguard. Oh, our veteran Hattushans got hit in the back by some rallying tribesmen. And they're routing again. Perfect, the enemy general's routing. Uh, let's kind of liquidate the enemy general the enemy general's unit here that's the important thing the carnage of the bronze age collapse we had some battles on the left flank here the king where's the king he kind of face planted where did he face plant? That was pretty bad of me to let that happen. Oh, his helmet is still moving in the wind. That's pretty good. There's the king. The great king of Khati. It says King Bura Buryash, but it sh I think it should be Burna Buryash of Babylonia. Burna Buryash, of course, was a Kassite king of Babylon in this uh, Bronze Age period. Late second millennium. Yeah, close victory, but <laughs> Shupiluliuma is on the ground. Oh boy. Well, you know what? Let's replenish our troops. Going forth. Yeah, Shupiluliuma's wounded. So let's um let's go with Khishtashu. Shish Hish sorry. Khish Tashu. You know what, if I go with that, I'm going to end up regretting it. So let's go with um, Tatamaru. He's barbaric, raised in the wild. Why not? The blade of Hati. Perfect. And let's recruit some troops, and that'll be the end of this, um, uh, this episode. So we've got native units. So these are units that are recruited from the province. That's um, Asia Minor Militia. Kashkian tribesmen and Kashkian javelin throwers. And our faction units that we can recruit in this region. So that's Hattushan swordsmen, Hittite axemen, Hittite tribesmen, and Hittite spearmen. So as you can see, the Hittite roster, at least at, you know, at the beginning, is more defensive in nature. But the local units, the Kashkians especially, are pretty good on the offense. So I'm going to recruit a couple of those, and then I think that'll be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is Total War Pharaoh. We were playing Total War Pharaoh. So we'll play a whole bunch of turns uh, the next few weeks. And yeah, I hope if you enjoy Historical Total Wars and their mods, 
consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video, and I'll see you in the next one later.